got that radioactive banana bread cooking in the oven, we can talk about some other radioactive stuff. Okay, what is up? So today we're gonna talk about uh, buying radioactive uh, objects over the internet. Now that can be kind of a um, interesting endeavor because there's really no way of knowing for sure uh, what you're buying is or isn't radioactive. Um, usually certain things of a certain time period will be radioactive and others won't be if they're made outside of this time period or way before that time period. So what I was trying to do is actually find a uh, compass, like an aircraft compass, that has radium paint on it, which is radioactive. Now, it's really hard to do this from pictures on the internet because you're looking at this and you're like, maybe? It could be? Uh, it's way different than if you're in the field and actually uh, have the object in front of you, then you can always put a Geiger counter up to it and see if it is radioactive. But in this case, you have to just kind of go on pictures and see uh, what comes in the mail and to see if the package itself is radioactive. So let's check out this package that I actually just got in the mail and see if it is in fact radioactive. All right, so here's the package in question. Let's uh, turn on the Geiger counter here. Oh. It's radioactive. Looks like through the packaging, I'm getting around uh, 5,000 counts per minute. And so that's just the radiation just cruising right through this cardboard box. Uh, it's not a dangerous level, it's just letting me know that it actually is radioactive and you wouldn't know this unless you had a Geiger counter with you. So it's kind of, if you're going to be uh, checking for uh, radioactive uh, objects, it's always good to have a Geiger counter on hand. Because um, if you don't have one, there's really no way of knowing. So let's uh, open this up and see what's inside. Here we go. Put that off to the side. So this is an aircraft compass. And it has radium paint on it, and that's what makes it radioactive. And the reason why it has radium paint on it is because uh, this radium paint, because it's radium mixed with zinc sulfide, would actually uh, glow in the dark. And it would glow in the dark for years, decades actually, until the radiation would break down the zinc sulfide in the paint here. So it's a cool piece of history. Uh, it is pretty radioactive. Uh, the glass on the front here actually blocks a lot of the radioactivity. You can see that this orange paint on the dials here kind of is a dead giveaway of uh, radium paint being used. but. I've gotten some stuff where I thought it was radioactive or it was going to be radioactive and it came in the mail and it wasn't. So it's kind of like, you know, buying stuff online for a collection or something like that. It's kind of hard, but then also the inverse of that, if you're trying to avoid buying uh, radioactive objects, uh, like these, uh, indicators, there's much smaller ones too, like, uh, like, uh, uh oil temperature and flaps and stuff like that for uh, aircraft that are radioactive, but then there are some that aren't. And so it's kind of hard to tell unless you have a Geiger counter. So let's, uh, since we got this out, let's see actually how radioactive it is. So we turn on the clicker here. So I just cover up the hole here on the Geiger counter so it can be a little quieter. So I'm getting around 22,000 counts per minute. And normal background uh, here in Montana is about 35 counts per minute. So this is uh, quite a bit more radioactive. It's probably about, you know, eight or 900 times uh, more radioactive uh, than background. So yeah, it's a cool find though. Make a cool, uh, cool part of the collection here. You know, here are the connectors in the back here. So you could change your heading and stuff like that with this course correction stuff. But yeah, so as I understand it, this was meant to sit like this in an aircraft and then the 
you know, either the bomb or the navigator, probably the navigator, would sit there and look down at this compass. And so, yeah, cool find though. I'm glad I was able to find uh, one of these. Uh, I actually bought this from a company, I believe it's called uh, flighthelmet.com. And it actually took about a month for it to get to me uh, because they were uh, pulling it out of your yard and then it finally got here. And it's actually in really good condition, a little banged up, but um, yeah, pretty cool little addition to uh, my collection here. So if you're looking to avoid <laughs> radioactive stuff like this, uh, I would say probably just uh, do your research and uh, find when this particular item was made because these um, aircraft indicators, these gauges and stuff like that, uh, that's just one field of things that are radioactive. There are like tiles and ceramics and glassware and all kinds of things that are radioactive. Um, there's actually a compass that's also radioactive. I'll bring that out too. So these are smaller compasses, like this is a very large one, and then these are very small ones. And so these small ones have the same thing. They have this radium paint inside of there, and they are very radioactive. But it's also because it's in a smaller space. And all this stuff can be uh, shipped just through the US mail. There's uh, usually no problem with it because a lot of this stuff um, doesn't exceed the gamma exposure that you would get, you know, shipping the package. So it's not that big of a problem, but uh, they do have limits on how strong of stuff can be sent through the mail. And I've been sent some pretty strong stuff that I thought would get turned around. Uh, but it didn't, it got to me, so, you know, I don't know how they're uh, measuring this stuff, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's not that big of a deal to them, I guess. So these, like, compasses and gauges and stuff like that, since they have radium on them, the most of the radiation is in the form of alpha and beta, but it actually does have a lot of gamma radiation, and that's actually what's penetrating this glass right now. And so that's what you can really, like, detect, and so if I was to take this apart, and take a direct reading without the glass there, the reading would be far larger than what this detector can actually handle and actually probably send it into overload. Um, but taking these apart is kind of like a dangerous business. It, I don't wanna say dangerous, maybe that's the wrong word. Um, you just gotta use a little extreme caution because what usually happens with these type of gauges is that the paint will actually uh, flake off on the numbers or the, or the indicator or something like that. And it'll become trapped inside of the glass here if it's sealed correctly. If it isn't sealed correctly, the dust will actually kind of leak out and contaminate the whole unit and your hands when you touch it. But it's, uh, it's just something to think about. When you take something like this apart, you have to just be careful of what you're doing and have a Geiger counter on hand and to make sure that you aren't getting contamination everywhere because that can happen quite easily with these uh, items because they are old and this paint uh, does deteriorate over time. So, but yeah, cool find though. But yeah, it's like a big difference between, you know, this compass and that compass. But this one uh, comes up as way more radioactive because it does have a lot of radium that's kind of on the outside of it. Uh, it's not sealed behind glass like this one is. And the same thing with this one too, it's just the same thing. Uh, it's just not, you know, not as old as that other one. But it's, uh, you know, it's pretty much the same thing as this one here too. So I didn't find all of these compasses, uh, these two, uh, in an antique shop. I actually found both of these online, you know, and this and some other stuff too. I do find a lot of stuff in antique shops and that's a lot easier to check with a Geiger counter, um, you know, if it's around and if these objects are there in the shop. But a lot of times, if I'm looking for something very specific, it's very hard to find because I have to go to so many different places and different cities will have different objects there depending on what their industry was at that time. Like if you go to like areas around Bellevue and Seattle and uh, Port Townsend, you'll find a lot of like um, kind of like naval compasses, uh, not aircraft compasses, but usually naval compasses that are doped with radium as well. And so it really depends on the area that you're going to um, visit, like an antique shop or something like that. And, the objects you find there are really uh, depend on the area that's around there. So that's what I found. 
Also, if you're looking to pick up a shirt like this, uh, I saw them on my website. I'll leave a link in the description and I got a couple other designs on there as well. All right, full disclosure, uh, those bananas aren't as radioactive as they appear to be. It's because they're inside of this bowl here. Uh, this bowl has uranium uh, oxide uh, in it to give it this color, and that's what was giving off the majority of the radiation that the Geyer counter was picking up. And so um, the banana bread uh, won't be as radioactive as that bowl, uh, but it will be slightly radioactive because it has those bananas in it but it won't be uh, radioactive enough for me to actually pick it up. So I just wanna get that out of the way just so you didn't think I was making a radioactive uh, loaf of banana bread well, you know, any more radioactive than it normally is. So anyway, 